So this is the infinitely variable Scott joke that we made in video 2368. Of course, the files for this are on Thingiverse, should anybody want to actually download them. And you might think, well, it doesn't have that much use really, but this can be turned into a continuously variable transmission, or a CVT. And when you think about CVTs, you're usually thinking about things like, oh, balls and belts and gears, but actually you don't really need that. What you really need is a difference in leverage. And this looks like a latch, but it isn't. It's a lever, and we operate the lever by this pin that rotates, and as the lever rotates, it'll push that latch in and out. Now the thing about the Scotch yoke is it has an infinite number of uh, positions between zero and the edge of however dis big the disc you make it. When you set it at zero and you turn it, then of course the latch doesn't move. If we actually set that at its fullest extent by pulling that out and we turn it, then the latch will move its furthest distance. Now, we don't need to use a latch, as I said. We can use a lever. If we use this lever on a spindle and we rotate that pin in it, what will happen is that that will be made to rotate backwards and forwards, yes, in a reciprocating motion. If we put a whole load of those on, then we'll get pretty good torque transmission. So instead of having it as a flat plate like this that looks like a latch, we can actually put it into a circle. If we put it into a circle and pop our rotating scotch yoke a bit, then as we rotate that, of course, that pin is moving around in a circle. If we put that pin into that lever, then as we rotate it, the lever will move up and down, rotating this. The amount that this is rotated by will vary depending what that pin is. And so we can make it rotate from anything to zero to however long that pin actually is in its travel. Now I've made this quite compact and small, but of course it could be huge if you wanted it to be, but it could be much bigger. All we need to do now is put eight of these in a circle around the driving pin. Right, to illustrate this, we're going to use this. This is our Scotch yoke eccentric, and I put an extra long pin on it. Now, we're going to use the fixed Scotch yoke just to illustrate it. Later on, we can swap this out for the variable Scotch yoke. And we're going to put this in this circular base plate instead of the square latch. And of course, just like Scotch yoke, if I turn that, then that becomes an eccentric that moves in a weird way. And here is my lever arm attached to my rod. If I slide that lever arm on there, then as I rotate that, of course, it moves the lever backwards and forwards. And as it moves the lever, what it does is rotate this rod here. Now, we have eight of them, so we just slot them in place, one after the other, until we're all the way around. And once we're in place, that's what it looks like. And we input here on this gear, and of course, as we input on the gear, all eight of those little rods wobble backwards and forwards. Now we have this cap and four of these uprights. The uprights go in there, and then that whole thing slots in there. So when we put it together, and I've changed the white rods for blue so you can see them better, then we need an output. Now we've got our input, which is here. And of course we've got our adjuster, which is the levers in the centre, and that pulls in and out to change that ratio. The output actually comes off the end of these blue rods. But remember, those levers make the rods move backwards and forwards like that. So what we'll do is just push and pull the output and we'll get net zero. So we want some kind of way of rectifying it. Now there are lots of ways to rectify mechanical movement. The easiest perhaps is a ratchet. And I've got a very small ratchet here which we'll have a closer look at. Of course we could use a clutch bearing or we could use a sprag bearing. But I'm going to use a ratchet just because it's really, really easy. So that's the little ratchet, there's eight of them actually, and they push onto the ends of those rods down to the base here, and then when the ratchets are on, that gear slots on top of the ratchet. Once we've done that and popped an output gear in the middle, we have our CVT. So we've gone from a fixed scotch yoke to a variable scotch yoke to operating the levers to create a CVT, and it's pretty compact and it's operated by that in the centre there. However, if you look here, what you might notice is this looks remarkably like a planetary gear set, and of course it is. And here the planets are quite small in relation to the output gear, so what that will do is step it down. And we want to step it up, really. 
Well, we want to do something like that, of course. What we need is for the planets to be bigger than the sun. Now, they're quite small because there's eight of them. If I reduce the number to four, flatten the whole thing out and make it bigger, I can get some big planets in there and then a small sun, and we'll have a CVT that steps up. Now, of course, that's pretty simple to do. And what I've done is create this base unit. And then we have this section here, which has a slide in it. And then we have the slide with a rack attached to it. The slide fits in there like that, so it can slide backwards and forwards. There's a cover plate here that goes on like that, so it can hold it in place as it slides backwards and forwards. And then that whole lock drops in there, and that's our drive mechanism where we can vary this. We vary this using the same mechanism that we used in the variable stop shock, because it is a variable stop shock. Then, of course, we take our levers with our pins and four of them slot on there like that and we put the top on. And when the base plate is together, just like before, these ratchets fit on top, making sure the ratchets point in the same way. All we then do is pop these ratcheted gears onto the ratchets and then the central output gear into the centre. That's going to be our output. This is going to be modified by the levers and now all we need is the input. Try this thing, we're going to use this. This is just a holder for the actual mechanism, and it's actually a variation of what we did with the Scotch yoke. It's made of three gears. This gear sits on top of that gear, and that gear sits on top of that. Then this plunger with a rack moves up and down, working this gear, that works this gear, that works this gear. When they're slotted in here in that arrangement, so they get slotted in that way, a bit of this gear is poking out, and that engages with the rack, that moves the pin. To put it together, just slot those gears into the space and then slide the axles through. And there it is glued in place. Now this bit slides in and out and when it does that of course it moves that pin position from the further edge to the centre, changing how much those gears move, or those levers move. As the levers move then the distance this covers get greater or lesser and so the drive on this will change as we move that lever. And because they're ratchets, of course, as I turn this in one direction, then equally, that only turns in one direction, even though these are wobbling backwards and forwards. I've put a dot on there so you can actually see it, and we continue to turn it. There we go. <laughs> we're getting a CVT. Now, one of the really interesting things is if I move that out all the way to, to the pin is in its central position, when I turn this, what I actually get is nothing at all. And there it is, me turning it, and no movement from the central gear. So being able to do that actually is pretty cool, because it can act as a clutch and the gearbox in one combined device. Because of the levers, of course, there's not much in the way of engineering there, so a lot of this can be extremely cheaply made just by pressing out of steel. And of course, it's a lump of plastic, and so everything's a bit thick and chunky. This could be brought right the way down to make a very compact device. Now, this is a proof of concept, remember, and, and so what I'm really doing is demonstrating the idea. There's a whole host of things we could do to this to actually improve it. I mean, to finish it, it needs a sleeve on here and then a couple of discs here with a selector fork, and the selector fork will move in and out while this whole thing turns. Remember that slew bearing that we did in a previous video? This would benefit from having the slew bearing in. We used ratchets only because you can 3D print them easily. What would be better would be a clutch bearing or a spread clutch, something like that. It'd make it quieter, and make it more efficient and make the movement tell a bit more than it does with a ratchet because ratchet is a stepwise motion. So there's an awful lot of things we can do to improve that, but that idea definitely worked. We've got a um, CBT combined clutch that could easily go onto a bicycle <laughs> made from levers. I will, of course, put this thing onto Thingiverse should somebody want to play with it and maybe develop it a bit further. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you very much for watching.